Ah, oh, gee whiz, Kukulgato. I'm really glad our moms let us hang out. I especially liked when you showed me the cage Jenny keeps you in when you're acting up. <laughs> what was that? Oh. Oh, no. No! no I'm not sorry. I just wanted to say, crack is one of my favorite tastes. Not only that, but balls smell amazing. Not pizza with left beef? My name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway. Bye, my Here is the thing that happened to one of my friends. I was there. Not pizza with left beef? This is a photo of an African American burn victim who lost the pigmentation in his left arm. Bye, my son. This is the picture of my friend Becky. She used to be happy, popular girl, until one night she snorted Mary Jane at a party. Calm down, Tumblr. Daddy's home. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Anytime I discuss Tumblr with a civilian, I feel like an archaeologist trying to explain the ruins of a once not great but existing virtual civilization. While I was creating one of my previous videos where I transformed myself into a 2012 Tumblr girl. <laughs> I went down a Tumblr rabbit hole that unlocked so many repressed memories. I felt like a World War I veteran, being shown footage of the trenches. This was my battle of Verdun. So why not drag you all down memory lane and do what I do best? Force groups into an arbitrary hierarchy. This is the tier list. F tier. Upstanding citizens. I'm gonna give y'all a little smooch on the forehead and tuck you into bed. E tier. I am truly indifferent. This fandom is too inoffensive to truly be worthy of punishment. A slap on the wrist, maybe. D tier. Delinquent teens. Now these fandoms have not graduated into full-blown human rights violations, but they are right on the verge. C tier. Y'all need to be on a watch list. Heck, I'm not allowing you within 500 feet of a school. B tier. You're going on trial at The Hague. Publicly televised. Sponsored by Cheyenne. Or Sheen. It doesn't matter. Okay. Jail time of some length is mandatory. A tier. Life sentence. Maximum security prison. No parole. S tier. Electric chair. I will only be including fandoms that were staples during the iconic 2010 to 2015 Tumblr era. So, sorry girl, but I'm not including The Good Place. FYI, I just did a Q&A on my Patreon. Where is my father? He's with me. And we are talking crap about you. <laughs> we're actually laughing at your baby photos together. <laughs> you were really ugly. So click on the link in the description or it'll be somewhere up here to support your girl. Also, I know that most of you were in a fandom or two, okay? I was about to say that it's okay and I'm not judging you, but that's a lie. Let me know in the comment section, what was the most embarrassing thing that you did or witnessed as a result of being in a fandom? Fandom. Don't lie to me. I'll know. Okay, let us begin. Supernatural. Okay, this fandom's greatest offense was not their cringiness per se, but their uh, ubiquity. You couldn't make a single innocent post without them finding a way to violently jam in a supernatural gif. How did y'all have so many of these in your arsenal? No offense, but this is why I've always said that at the heart of every successful fandom are children and the unemployed. Who else has this much time to archive every single possibly gifable moment? Now, I was never really a part of this fandom, so imagine the horror of learning that Joe Biden had won the 2020 election via a Destile, which is the popular ship of Dean and Castile, becoming canon. That's like finding out about 9-11 in the middle of the Blueprint's release party. The difference is that the Blueprint, unlike Supernatural, had a satisfying conclusion. This is unrelated, but isn't it kind of odd that early buyers of the album in New York City were probably blasting Hova while the second tower fell? H to the Izzo, V to the Izzo, C tier. Sherlock. What I can at least admire about this fandom is that most of them now, being adults, look back on their time in this disappointing cult and Shudder. It's okay. I too indulged in media that made me feel like I was an intellectual giant, towering over the inferior peasants at my school. But what really tickled me about the Sherlock fandom was their incredible ability to exude the energy of a sheltered 12-year-old when they were trying to pick fights. If anyone so much as uttered a critique of the show, the Sherlock fans would descend upon them with the most unintentionally hilarious and toothless threats. Oh, a tired joke making fun of Blueberry Cam Recorder. Sherlock fan emerges. Do I sense, my dear? Sweet British God King is being slighted. I will have you know that you pissed off the wrong fandom. <laughs> That's right, sweaty. We know how to find out where you live, where your family lives, what time you go to bed, what you're allergic to, what your worst nightmare is, and how to make it a reality. We know how to psychologically manipulate you until you're a sobbing, sweating mess curled up in the fetal position on the floor. Just be grateful you got off with a warning this time. John Locke Shipper, out.
The mental health crisis in this country really is unprecedented. All those conspiratorial boards created trying to unlock the mysteries of the show based on assumed Easter eggs. All that hormonal energy poured into the series. Only for the conclusion to be whack. Not a sting. A tier. Hamilton. This fandom, no doubt being behind the infamous trans Thomas Jefferson meme post, is reason enough to place them on S tier. But the most egregious offense of the Hamilton fandom, and Lin-Manuel Miranda in general, is giving theater kids hope. Now, if children want to participate in the fine arts and put on terrible renditions of West Side Story, fine. I'd rather it be this than gangbanging, though I do think that some of those kids on the street are ironically more musically gifted. However, society should only tolerate this under the condition that 99% of these teens take those dreams of Broadway stardom, shove them into a box, and leave them in the closet of their childhood bedroom before they go off to college or jail. Because if those pipe dreams get dragged out into the adult world, they result in a bunch of waiters in LA who have deluded themselves into thinking that they're actually going to make it. You can hear them quietly humming to themselves, and the melody is off key. Hey, tragic. S tier. Harry Potter. Be for real. You retook that Pottermore quiz when you didn't get Gryffindor, didn't you? I can sense your shame through the screen. You can't hide your virtual sins from me. You are a Hufflepuff. Accept it! Anyway, I always got Slytherin, as you can tell from my genteel and compassionate personality. Now, Harry Potter is mainstream enough where the average fan is pretty tame compared to some of the people on this list. Can they be cringy? Yes, but most of their cringe nowadays stems from the fact that many of them are hurtling towards 40 and haven't yet let this fandom go. I'm sorry, but you gotta pick a more dignified adult interest, like prescription pills or scrolling through Zillow while weeping hysterically. It's time that you let the waters of middle-aged mediocrity wash over you. Best not to fight it. D tier. British vlogger fans. S tier. Simply for the fact that these fans made, no offense, but some of the most remarkably boring people famous for doing tag challenges of all things. Their fame would have been more deserved if they were filming execution videos. Best friend tag. Boyfriend tag. British tag. Registered sex offender tag. Look, most of these vloggers seem like sweet people, and I assume that many of them are probably involved in some sort of multi-level marketing scheme and are genuinely too naive to realize it. But this era of YouTube was bleak. Every time I hear this royalty-free iMovie background music, I get PTSD flashbacks. <sighs> Homestuck. Back in 2011, when I was an innocent, stop laughing, bucktooth child, and I was first exposed to the undiagnosed mental illness support group known as Tumblr, I had to ask myself, what is Homestuck? But now, over a decade later, I find myself asking, what is Homestuck? No, seriously, what is it? What's terrifying is that I know for a fact that I have Googled this question at least several times, and without fail, every time, my brain has been incapable of recalling a single detail of my findings. I don't think that people who aren't on a very specific wavelength are even capable of understanding or being in this fandom. I love that I'm speaking so ominously about what is essentially a bunch of awkward 14 year olds in face paint, but it is unfamiliar and suspicious to me. So best to be safe, B tier. One Direction. <laughs> Ah, if you want a summation of the kind of unique humor, let's just say, that this fandom brought to Tumblr, look no further than this incredible short romantic story. Arguably one of the greatest works of contemporary literature. Hashtag, imagine you and Zayn are at the hospital because you're getting a heart transplant. I'm so nervous, you say. Don't be. You're gonna pull through this, I know that for a fact. You kiss him and go into operation. You come out successful and run out to tell Zane, but he's not there. You find that little teddy bear with a card, shaped like a card. Hey babe, sorry I couldn't be there for you after your operation, but I will always be in your art forever, Zane. You ask one of the nurses, where's the boy I was with before my operation? The nurse replies, didn't they tell you who was the donor was? Broken heart. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Easily one of the most frantic of the music fandoms. I'm assuming because much like the fan base of any boy band, Directioners were mostly young girls screaming their puberty at a bunch of scrawny boys with non-threatening masculinity dancing on stage. The most devastating byproduct of this trend being the popularity of MagCon. And no shade to these girls, by the way, because one of my earliest crushes was the German bad boy Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Okay, that made him sound like he's a Nazi war criminal. I'm not even joking about having a crush on him. And you know what? 
right, I stand by it. If anything, I prefer this to the depraved crap that boys their age were having their sensual awakening to. Listen, also, the later albums from this band, PZ, post to Zayn, had a lot of bops, which is odd because Zayn was their most gifted vocally and in terms of bone structure. Stockholm Syndrome, Olivia, you blast those songs on a long drive down the highway, the wind blowing in your hair like you're an Afghan hound. Ugh, it's bliss. However, I cannot overlook the sheer amount of unintentionally hilarious memes this fandom spawned. They're just dripping in such sincerity. You know what, I hope whoever made these is having a good life. I hope their credit is good. C tier. Five seconds of summer. Now what was scary about this people was their weird inferiority complex. Let's be real, One Direction was the boy band of the 2000s in the English speaking world before BTS came in and absolutely dominated. I bet they're still practicing their pop locking and dropping in the military bunker or wherever they are. Oh no, but don't you see? Five seconds of summer is a real band. Some of their remaining fans might be in the comment section of this video. Five seconds of summer play their own instruments. Okay, they're rock stars, not teeny boppers. This is valid rock. We are not the same as one erectioners or whatever they want to call themselves, okay? Oh my gosh. Okay, girl. Don't get your flannel in a twist. You win. You're different and edgier than One Direction fans. Which isn't saying much. That's like being considered more transgressive than the Wiggles. The competition isn't exactly stiff. I will consider your fandom truly edgy when one of the Five Seconds of Summer's band members bites the head of a bat off. Ozzy Osbourne style. Unlike a lot of these other fandoms, these kiddos were just so confrontational. Beefing with them wasn't even that fun. <sighs> B tier, but if you swap out jail for anger management. Glee. Now, I was never an official member of this fandom, but I was certainly a fan of the first three seasons of the show, after which it ended, inextricably linked with the rise of not theater kids exactly, but an even worse subgenre of teens, those who did show choir. Though this fandom has created quite the interesting evolution in its members, starting out as mostly closeted, then leaving as openly gay, but having been made homophobic by the show. You may deny it now, but I know that many of you had a crush on Mr. Schuster. You didn't think that this was cringe at the time that it aired, did you? Admit it! I'm talking to myself. S tier. And you know what? We deserve it. Some crimes can never be forgiven. The One Slur. For any of you who are fortunate enough to not be aware of what this is. The One Slur was a character from the Lorax fandom. Well, okay. It wasn't technically an official fandom, but there were fans who began shipping the One Slur with Drumroll Please, an earlier version of himself, referred to by other Tumblr users as One Cest. This might have been the ship that broke the camel's back. Do I even have to say it? S tier. Attack on Titan. This was the standard anime that seemed to be the most popular at the time because, well, it was fresh. Did they get as cringy as the Death Note Brigade? Usually not. Nor did they get as creepy as some of the other anime fandoms are prone to get. Now, I might be a little bit biased because I watched this anime and, you know, might have gone to Otakon while I was in high school. And was I almost kicked out from that event? Maybe. But much like most respectable people who watch anime, do I have a problem making fun of other people who also watch anime? Absolutely not. By virtue of being weebs, I think that this fandom needs to at least be put on trial. In cosplay, B tier. You know what, I'll throw them a lifeline. There will be a chance for those on trial to compete in an anime girl voice-off, where the person who can do the most convincing Ooh -woo. accent will be acquitted. Psych, it's a trap. The winner gets bumped up to S tier. Marvel slash the Avengers. The most basic vanilla fandom, really. If anything, it was only really the Loki fans that would get a little zesty. Maybe there was more drama in this fandom that I was just not privy to, but my goodness, there is an almost unbearable banality to these fans. Now, because of Marvel fatigue, I think I'm just being biased here. And again, because Marvel was so mainstream, the fandom didn't have the petty personal squabbles that was common in smaller fandoms, where people practically knew each other on a username basis nor did they tap into the unique fetishistic horror that is a staple in more niche fandoms. Marvel slash Avengers fans elicit the same reaction as looking at a stock photo image of general population. I'm gonna give them E tier. Hannibal. Much like the Sherlock fandom, there was an attempt at being edgy that was so toothless. Again, because the people going, teehee, what if we did a cannibalism? Teehee, 
blood. We're all like 14. We are the dark and sophisticated fandom vibes. Along with the Scandinavian Easter Island head who was the lead actor. Really tickled my fancy. It's like the kids at school that wore capes or little fake fangs. Aww. Is someone having an identity crisis? The older I get, the more I find the desperate attempt by teens to find a sense of self. More amusing and endearing than annoying, but still. D tier. Doctor Who. The most inoffensive member of Super Hulak. The unholy fandom trinity of Tumblr. Doctor Who fans were just a standard amount of cringe. The kind that you can expect from really any awkward teen that just had a thing for the British because they were under the false impression that the English are sophisticated. I don't know why, but I always thought they were kind of cute. Doctor Who fans, not the English. I suppose the fact that they were less confrontational than Sherlock or Supernatural fans is why I'm a bit more forgiving towards them. Or maybe just aesthetically because, you know, I like that beautiful blue box that he was always traveling around in. I know it's called the TARDIS. You dorks, okay? Though it does make me giggle knowing that the show convinced millions of people to try a fish stick dipped in custard. E tier. Percy Jackson. I have admittedly never read the books, but apparently Little Miss Percy is a cherubic, dyslexic sass mouth. And I'm personally some of those things. I can't knock that. This fandom was not loud or obnoxious enough for me to really form an opinion on them as a third party. Eh. E tier. Jennifer Lawrence. Now I know that many of you might not consider this to be an official fandom per se, but I disagree. If anything, the j -Law phenomenon was more of a cult-like obsession, fueled by the Hunger Games fandom, sure, but j -Law was on a whole other level. Now my frustration with this fandom has nothing to do with Miss Lawrence, but rather, number one, the touch my button, buy me pizza a crowd that she appealed so greatly to. And number two, her becoming the ultimate 2010s it girl that people put on a pedestal for her being quirky and relatable. Only for her I'm not like other girls persona or assumed persona, really, to be the reason she was dragged back down off said pedestal. Now, there is a valid critique of the internalized misogyny behind not wanting to be like other girls, and you can have your own opinions and criticisms of Jennifer Lawrence if you want to. But for me personally, what this whole j -Law debacle made me realize as a kid was that no matter how beautiful, relatable, funny, approachable you might be, eventually the public will grow tired of you and find some reason, even if it is a pedantic one, to write you off as annoying and a tryhard, especially if you're a young woman, even if you didn't do anything wrong or problematica. Example, Anne Hathaway. Ugh, she's just so inauthentic. She's not raw and relatable like j -Law. Five seconds later. Wait, never mind. <laughs> like Jennifer actually tries like way too hard to be like quirky and relatable. Like stop talking about how much you love food already. I mean, Anne Hathaway's little, it came true, did like honestly make my skin recoil, but like, oh, it, come on. Did it warrant this level of vitriol? What the heck do you people want? B tier, Studio Ghibli, or Ghibli. Ah, what a welcomed little respite. Truly the presence of this fandom is like a sip of cool, crisp lemonade under the shade on a hot summer day. This is the fandom that I would say everyone on Tumblr was an unofficial member of because these films were so beloved and sweet and innocent and transported you back to a time before you knew what an auto emissions tax was. F tier. The Hunger Games. Now, personal bias is going to come into play here. Once again, the mainstream popularity of this franchise would only have been possible if the source material wasn't too weird or cringy, at least not enough to be alienating to the masses. If anything, the only reason that I find this fandom to be particularly interesting is because of its ongoing beef with the Divergent fans during this time, which as a battle is like the Knights of Rohan versus Barnacle Boy and Mermaid Man. E tier. I'm not going to include the Divergent fandom. Well, I hope you enjoyed my list. If you didn't, let me know, actually, um, in multiple comments. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know every single time that I upload. Thank you for watching. Shout out to my top patrons. If you would like to donate to my Patreon, the link is on the screen and in the description down below. Thank you to my other lovely patrons. Your names should be scrolling on screen as I speak. I'm going to try and upload uh, interesting new content that isn't just uh, podcast episodes to my Patreon. So if you like the segment of the Q&A, then please go on there and support me if you can. Uh, yeah. And before any of you ask anything that's weird or gross, no, it's a rated G. Patreon, okay. Okay, it's like PG, because sometimes I see like the word, but. Um, anyway, bye.